classes, and so that's the day we'll move up there. Uh, and that's also the day that we'll start the college and career class or the uh, young adults class. And uh, also Master Club uh, starts that Sunday as well uh, at 11 o'clock. And so I know the, uh, the kids are excited about that. And so uh, just remember those things. I uh, would encourage you to continue praying for the American Gospel Project. Uh, we sent out uh, over 10,000 of the John and Romans uh, yesterday, uh, or excuse me, Monday, uh, to Franklin County, Indiana. And we've had uh, several co- phone calls, uh, a couple emails as well of people that have been receiving them, thanking us for sending those out and things. And so uh, it's great to know that they're getting delivered, uh, but we obviously are praying that God would work in people's hearts as they read through those and that they would come to know Christ as their Savior. So be in prayer for that. And then also don't forget about the Bible Institute that will be starting on September the 14th. And so if you're interested in taking any of those classes, uh, there is a sheet back there uh, that has the classes uh, listed, and uh, you can sign up for those, and we'll begin uh, on September 14th. I do believe you, have to, you need to register by August 30th so that we can make sure we get the books in time and things. Now, if you, these are the same classes that we were offering in the spring uh, because we didn't get to finish. We only got about four weeks in. And, of course, we had to stop because of the whole COVID-19 thing. So we're going to be redoing those same courses. So if you already have the books, you don't need, to, you don't need the books. You won't have to pay. Um, but we do need to know if you're going to be coming to the class. So if you could still at least sign up there. Uh, and, of course, we'll have a record that you were in the class last year as well. Uh, but if you're interested in taking this new, uh, you can sign up. You don't have to take all three of them. You can just take one class if you'd like or two. Or you can take all three uh, and uh, just sign up back there. Uh, I think the two classes being offered is Old Testament 2, uh, the life of Christ, and then uh, Acts 2, and, uh, and so if you're interested in those. Um, let me just mention some prayer requests tonight, and then we'll take a time uh, to pray together, uh, those that have filled out the cards here. Um, just to mention some prayer requests here, be in prayer for uh, Jay's Aunt Barb. Uh, uh, she has cancer and is recovering from surgery. Um, and so be in prayer for uh, Jay's aunt Barb. And then um, we have um, Michael Raker uh, fell and sprained his ankle. And um, he was probably running too fast. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how he falls and sprains his ankle, but uh, he went to um, Cincinnati Children's. And so be in prayer for Michael. And uh, that kid is always on the move, right? I mean, there's, you can't hold that kid down. Um, but be in prayer for him and, uh, and obviously for Anita as well. Uh, and then uh, Miss Betty uh, has a prayer request for uh, Shannon. Her stepdaughter um, is lost and uh, for salvation there. And also, um, I believe is, she is tested positive for COVID-19. Miss Betty, is that correct? Okay. So be in prayer for uh, Miss Betty's stepdaughter, uh, Shannon, uh, for salvation and also for health there. Uh, with, uh, with COVID. Uh, and then also uh, be in prayer for Hildred Hudson. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Terrell Hudson, Travis Hudson. I always get those two mixed up. It's Dr. Travis Hudson's wife. Dr. Travis Hudson passed away, uh, but it's his wife there, um, longtime pastor and uh, pastor emeritus there at um, Moraine Heights Baptist Church. And, uh, but uh, Hildred Hudson uh, is having some health issues and uh, so just be in prayer for her. Uh, she's a good friend of Miss Betty uh, as well. Um, Miss Joy Garland is asking prayer for her grandmother's health issues. And, of course, they were, uh, the Garlands were supposed to not even be here. Uh, they were headed out on vacation and got a call that uh, Vicky's mom was not doing well, and so they turned around and came back. And so uh, be in prayer for Vicky's mom there with the health issues. And then also uh, continue praying for Joy's friend Jacob, uh, for salvation, and uh, be in prayer for him, and uh, praise the Lord that young people have a heart uh, for, uh, for their friends and uh, for, for salvation, so uh, be in prayer for, uh, his name is Jacob, and then uh, Miss Leah Euler is praying for her cousin, um, is that Marsha, Mar- Marsha, uh, she's having tests done uh, for some health concerns, and uh, so be in prayer for Miss Leah's cousin, Marsha. And then also, uh, Miss Steph, uh, Aunt Bev is heading to Van Crest for rehab. Uh, this is Tom's aunt, 
And uh, so it's uh, good that she's getting out of the hospital, but uh, going to Van Crest for rehab. And uh, so be in prayer uh, for her. And then also Miss Lisa has an unspoken. And so be in prayer for Miss Lisa's unspoken as well. And then, of course, I hope you'll continue praying for uh, our missionaries and uh, the country of the week. Uh, what, a, what isn't that a blessing on Sunday night to be able to interact with one of our missionaries clear across the world? And uh, he sent me an email and said that they really enjoyed that. And the kids really enjoyed uh, being able to, 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 to see the church and, and things like that. And so that was, that was a tremendous blessing. And so I do hope you'll be praying uh, for our missionaries uh, during this time. Uh, of course, many of them um, in uh, countries where they're still on lockdown and things like this and uh, things haven't opened up. So be in prayer for them. So let's go ahead and pray for, uh, for these this evening. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we do thank you, uh, Lord, for this day, and we just thank you for your mercy to us. Uh, Father, we do thank you for uh, being a God that, that hears and answers prayer. And uh, Father, I know tonight every one of us could probably give testimony to answered prayer. And, uh, but Father, we do come tonight uh, with these uh, prayer requests before us, Lord. We do pray for Miss Lisa uh, and the unspoken that she has. And Father, I pray that you just continue to work uh, in her life uh, during this time. And, uh, Lord, that you would just uh, help her to, to look to you in whatever this situation might be. And, uh, Lord, that she would just trust you with that. Uh, Lord, that you would just work as only you can. We do pray for Aunt Bev as uh, she'll be heading to um, Van Crest for rehab. And uh, thank you that she's uh, out of the hospital. But I know uh, Brother Tom and Steph still concerned about her. And so, Father, I do pray that you would just uh, be with her and uh, just help her as she continues to, uh, to get better. And, Father, just help her and give her strength that she needs. We do pray for uh, Leah's cousin, Marcia, uh, who's having some tests done for some health concerns. Uh, Lord, I pray that you just give the doctors wisdom uh, there to know exactly what needs to be done, uh, what might be causing these health issues, and to be able to know how to help her. And so, Father, we just uh, pray for her tonight. Uh, Lord, we do pray for Miss um, Vicky's mom and uh, Joy's grandma with the health issues that she's having. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would just um, just comfort her, Lord, during this time. And I pray that she would not be in any pain or anything. And uh, Lord, I pray for Miss Vicky. And, uh, Lord, I pray you just give her strength during this time as well. And, Lord, just the grace that she needs as well as uh, Jeff and Joy and other family members. And, uh, Lord, that you would just, uh, just work through them during this time. Uh, Lord, that they might even be uh, that testimony to other family members. And, uh, and so, Father, I pray you just watch over her. Uh, Lord, we pray for Joy's uh, friend Jacob uh, for his salvation. And, God, I pray that you would just uh, speak to his heart, uh, Lord, and help him to realize that, that he... And needs to be saved and, and that he needs to put his faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Uh, Lord, we do pray for Miss Betty's friend, Hildred Hudson, and uh, the health issues that she's uh, going through. We thank you for her and her husband's many faithful years of serving you. And, uh, and so, but Father, we do pray as she's having some health issues now that you would just uh, help her during this time. And uh, Lord, even Miss Betty, that she might be an encouragement uh, to her. Uh, we pray for her um, stepdaughter, Shannon, Lord, who... Uh, is tested positive for COVID-19, I pray that you would just, um, Lord, just help her to be able to uh, get over this and uh, to get better from it. Uh, but Lord, more importantly, we pray for her salvation. Uh, we pray that you would speak to her heart and realize that she needs to be saved. And uh, Lord, that life is, life is a vapor. And Lord, that uh, she can't just put it off and put it off. But Lord, she needs to put her faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Um, Father, do pray for our Michael tonight. And uh, Lord, as uh, there at Cincinnati Children's, with uh, as he sprained his ankle, and uh, Lord, I pray that you would just give the doctors wisdom there. Lord, I know his uh, his ankles are are not strong anyway, and and Lord, with this that it might complicate some things. And Father, I pray that you would just, uh, Lord, uh, just help it to to not be anything serious. Uh, Lord, I pray that you just give him relief from the pain that he might be in, and uh, Lord, that he'd be able to get back home quickly. Uh, we pray for Miss Anita as well. I know she's. Uh, there with him. I pray that you just give her uh, the strength that she needs during this time. Lord, we pray for uh, Brother Jay's uh, Aunt Barb that's uh, uh, battling cancer and uh, recovering from the surgery. Uh, Lord, I pray that you would just uh, give her strength that she needs, and uh, we pray that the, uh, the surgery and everything uh, would be a success, and they would be able to, uh, to get that cancer there. Lord, I know many people uh, suffering from cancer. We think of uh, Miss Donna's neighbor, Molly Moormeyer, and uh, my Uncle Howard in Oregon, and, 
Uh, Lord, many that are just struggling with cancer, and God, I pray that you just give them uh, the strength that they need, whether they're going through uh, rehab or chemo or whether they're having surgeries done, uh, whatever it might be. Uh, God, I pray that you just uh, watch over them and just help their bodies uh, uh, to accept the different treatments and things well, and uh, that you just help them to, if it be your will, Lord, to be healed from these different things. And so, Father, we ask that you just continue to be with our missionaries. Lord, we think of uh, the missionaries that we support, and uh, Lord, obviously there are many, many more throughout the world. And Father, we pray that you just watch over them and keep them safe. Uh, Lord, we ask you to just put your hedge of protection on their families and their ministries, and Lord, that you would just uh, provide for them. Uh, Lord, just uh, thinking about uh, Brother Edwards and his family, and, and just through all this time that they've been there, and, and the loss of the support that they've, they've had, God, I pray that you would just uh, touch uh, churches' hearts to be able to take them on for support or increase uh, the amount that they need so they can be financially uh, stable there. Uh, we do think of uh, Mrs. Edwards and uh, the issues, uh, the health issues that she's having. Uh, God, I pray that you would just um, give the doctors wisdom to know how to be able to help and even be able to get in uh, earlier than what they were expecting. Lord, with the, uh, the system they have there, it's kind of far out. And uh, God, I pray that you just help them to be able to get in sooner and just give her favor with the doctors there. And uh, Father, we ask that you just be with uh, the rest of our missionaries as well. Lord, just watch over them and just help them to be able to continue ministering uh, during this time and what a, what a great opportunity it is to be able to share the gospel with people during this time, that, uh, that there is hope in Christ. We think of the John and Romans that have gone out this week, and uh, Father, I pray that you just continue working uh, in those and that there would be people that would read them and realize their need of Jesus Christ and put their faith and trust in him. So, Father, we ask that you just use your word to speak to people's hearts. Lord, bless the service tonight, and uh, we ask that you just receive all the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, well, Brother Shane, let's go ahead and have another song then. And I think our screens are back. Yes, sir. All right, as we get words. Amen. All right, let's all stand up. There shall be showers of blessings. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing sent from the Savior above. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessings, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessings, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessings, send them upon us, O Lord. Grant to us now a refreshing, come now and honor thy word. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing, now as on Jesus we call. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are falling, but for the showers we plead. Well, if you would take your Bibles tonight, open to the book of First Thessalonians and chapter number five, and um, looking as we kind of conclude and finish up our study in the book of First Thessalonians, and uh, I hope it's been an encouragement and a blessing uh, to you. I hope you've been able to learn uh, from it and to be able to take the truths that we are learning and apply them uh, to our lives, and so I hope you be... Uh, praying about those things, and uh, looking forward to 
uh, this coming Sunday, of course, uh, always looking forward to being in the Lord's house, but Sunday night, I'm going to begin a new series that kind of goes along with our theme. It was kind of supposed to be a series that we started kind of back in the spring, uh, but uh, just kind of, the Lord just kind of changed our plans on all that, right? And uh, through in this COVID-19, uh, but just on uh, being totally surrendered, and so looking forward to that. And then uh, later on in the year, in September, um, I'm working on a series that we'll be doing on Sunday night on uh, basically kind of developing your own biblical standards and how do we develop biblical standards and uh, what should our biblical standards be according to the Word of God. And uh, so I'm looking forward to that as well. And so uh, I hope you'll pray uh, for those series. Obviously, we always uh, want uh, things to go well, and I hope you pray that we get, get all the things that we need ready for those. Uh, but 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, and uh, we'll begin reading in verse number 23. He says, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, again, completely, W-H-O-L-L-Y, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Brethren, pray for us, and greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. And I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. As we were looking a couple weeks ago in verse number 23 about living ready and making sure that we are living as if we are prepared for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and we saw uh, just a couple things here in verse number 23 that if we're going to live ready, that comes through prayer. We need to be making sure that uh, we're spending time in prayer with the Lord and making sure our heart is right with the Lord so that we can live the way He wants us to live. And then uh, living ready comes through sanctification. And he talks about that here. And he says, the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And so he's saying we are to be sanctified completely. His desire uh, is that we would allow him to work through our life uh, to sanctify us, uh, to, to allow him to do what he would have in our life. Sometimes we get this idea of what we think is right and what we think uh, God ought to do in our lives, but we want to make sure that God is working through us. And that's what he says, that the God of peace sanctify you wholly. And then he says, and I pray, God, that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we saw the third thing was that living ready comes through being blameless. And again, that word blameless is not meaning sinless, uh, but it means, uh, it means just to be free from impurity. And uh, it gave the illustration of, you know, a Teflon pan when you uh, they have those pans there you're supposed to be able to crack an egg in it and it doesn't stick that's that's what it's talking about uh, yes no doubt people will uh, bring accusatory things but none of those things should stick because of how we're living for the Lord and uh, being blameless in our life and of course he already goes back to that in uh, chapter 3 and verse number 13 where I already mentioned he says to the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God even our Father, uh, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. So twice here in this book, Paul has said the importance of being blameless before the Lord, uh, being blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. But when we look at this a little bit further, we were, I was explaining it a little bit, and then there just wasn't enough time. But he says, in verse number 23, he says, I pray, God, that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we, we talked a little bit about this, um, how so often when we talk about our body, and we know we, are, we have three parts, but how often we refer to it as the body, soul, and spirit. And if you guys have that body, soul, and spirit where the body is in the middle, uh, you have that graph there. Uh, you can see that many times we look at the body is what is... Uh, you know, the body is central, right? And then uh, the soul and then the spirit. And so uh, the body is what is really the focus, uh, our flesh, right? That's the focus. And so our flesh then uh, determines what our, our soul does, what our mind, our will, emotions are. And then, of course, that determines uh, even our spirit. What is our spirit going to be like? But I want you to notice here that he talks about 
a reverse order here. He says that we are to be uh, our whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. So here we find the reverse order of that, right? Where we have the spirit that is the focal point, right? And then you have that affecting the soul and then that affecting the body. We want to talk a little bit about that tonight because this, this is very key. It's very important for a Christian to really understand how God has designed for him to work through us, right? I mean, we just read that in verse number 23, the God of peace sanctify you holy. So God is wanting to work through us to sanctify us holy completely. But the question is, how does he do that? How are we to allow God to sanctify us holy? And so we're going to look this evening at this idea of spirit, soul, and body and why it is so important that we begin with the spirit, we must begin with the spirit, right? We cannot begin with a body. We cannot begin with a soul. We must begin with the spirit. That must be the focal point. Why don't you turn with me in the book of Romans, chapter number 8. Romans, chapter number 8. Romans, chapter number 8. And we're going to look at this spirit, soul, and body tonight. And, and I want to encourage you, you know, sometimes we get into a habit of saying things and, you know, sometimes we can just say, well, body, soul, and spirit. But I want to encourage you to get into the habit of saying it the way the Bible gives it, spirit, soul, and body, right? Uh, because that's so vital for a Christian, spirit, soul, and body. So should we say body, soul, and spirit? What should we say? Come on, what should we say? Spirit, soul, and body, right? Spirit, soul, and body. So when we say we're made in three parts, just like uh, God is uh, Trinity, we're, uh, we have three parts uh, to, the, to the human person, uh, we could say that is what? Come on, come on, right? Spirit, soul, and body, right? And so we're going to work on that. Spirit, soul, and body, okay? Uh, and so I'm going I'm to encourage you to, uh, to change your thinking on this. Don't say body, soul, and spirit. Uh, say spirit, soul, and body. And uh, so notice here in Romans chapter 8, verse number 1, he says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, right? So he's talking about those who have put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. And what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Again, Paul gives a great illustration of why it's so important here that we it is spirit, soul, and body. Spirit, soul, and body. Think about this. When God made Adam and Eve, he made them spirit, soul, and body. But then when Adam and Eve sinned against God and they died that day, it was not the body that died. It was not the soul that died. It was the spirit that died. The spirit, they were, they were separated from God. So yes, they still had a spirit. They're, they had a body, they had a soul, and they had a spirit, but their spirit was dead. Uh, their spirit was not uh, able to, to communicate with God as God had intended that to be. And so what begins to happen now, and especially when you go back to uh, Genesis chapter 3, of course, you'll find that even in the Garden of Eden, they have a spirit, soul, and body. But what did Adam and Eve allow to control them? Did they allow their spirit to control them? We know the answer to that is no. Did, we allow, did they allow their mind to control them, their will, their emotions? No. What did they allow to control them? Their body. Their body. What did, what did the Bible say? That as the serpent shows her this fruit and begins to deceive her and, oh, it's good for food. And the Bible says that she saw it was good for food. What is she doing? Her body is thinking, this is going to be good for me. It's going to be good for my body. And I'm going to be able to enjoy this. And, and now, instead of being controlled by the Spirit, she's now being controlled by her flesh, her body, right? 
And this is exactly what Paul talks about here. Those of us who are in Christ are not to be walking in the flesh. We're not to be controlled by the flesh. We are to be controlled by the Spirit. And notice again, he says, there is therefore now no condemnation of them which are in Christ Jesus. And we say, praise God for that. There's no condemnation. Uh, We can stand before God righteous and holy because of what Jesus Christ did for us. But, he says, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. He says, those of us who are in Christ, there is a certain way that God expects us to live. Uh, I know people say, well, I'm saved, and I'm, I'm under the blood of Jesus Christ, and God's given me grace, and I have liberty, and I can do whatever I want. Wrong. That is not what the Bible says. Okay? Notice he says, as a Christian, we are to be walking in the Spirit, not the flesh. And this is why it's so important that we understand that we are designed, created by God, spirit, soul, and body. The spirit is so important because when when our spirit is not walking with God, when our spirit is not the focus and we're we're, we're not walking in the presence of God and we're not having that close time with God and our spirit is not close with God, guess what begins to take over? The body. Our flesh begins to take over. And this is why he talks about that here in verse number five. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. He says, look, if if we have been born into the family of God and we have the Holy Spirit living in us and our spirit has been made alive now, you go back and you you read Ephesians chapter two, he talks about that we've been made alive. Our spirit has been made alive now. And we have that communion. We have that fellowship with God. Why is it so important that we walk in the Spirit? Because if we walk in the Spirit, the Spirit then is able to, if you could say, affect or influence our soul. And our soul is dealing with our mind, our will, our intellect, our emotions, right? So now the Spirit is is affecting, it's influencing the soul, and then the soul is then able to influence the body. You say, well, how can I walk in the Spirit? It's exactly what we're looking at this morning or this evening. This is how we're able to walk in the Spirit. It all begins with the Spirit. It does not begin with me. It does not begin with my flesh. It does not begin with my, my intellect or my emotions. It begins with the Spirit. And that's why it's so important that uh, even as my dad is going through Sunday morning and Sunday school about uh, studying the Word of God and how to study, why is that so important? Because that all affects our spiritual walk. And if our spiritual walk is not right, guess what else isn't going to be right? Our soul, our mind, our will, our emotions, our intellect, that's not going to be right. And then you can definitely guess what else isn't going to be right? Our body. What we do, what we say. People say, well, you know, Pastor, I just, I just can't get victory over my tongue. I just, you know, maybe it's at work or maybe it's at home or whatever. I just, you know, I just get so mad and I just lash out and I just can't get victory. You know why? Because your body is the focus. Your flesh is the focus, not the spirit. You are allowing your flesh to control you just as Adam and Eve did in the, in the beginning. That's what's happening. You see, why would God say to walk in the Spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh if it was impossible to do? Now, I will say this. I'm not saying it's just a piece of cake, right? Well, you know, if it's in the Bible, it must be a piece of cake. Wrong. It's not just a piece of cake. No, it's something you're going to have to work at, something that you're going to have to to train yourself to do and to allow God to work through. Again, that's why he says at the beginning of the verse, uh, back there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, the very God of peace sanctify you holy. It's God going to be able to work through you to affect our spirit. That's what's happening there. The Spirit is, God's Spirit is working in our spirit. And as we are in communion with God, we're in the Word of God, we're in prayer with God, then the Spirit is able to affect the soul. Think about what he says here in in Romans chapter 8, verse number 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. God says the carnal mind... That, that, that person that is always walking in the flesh, they are at enmity with God, right? We, all, we talk about the, the battle that always takes place inside of a Christian, right? The battle between the spirit and the flesh. What happens when we yield to the flesh? We are at enmity with God. 
We're at enmity with God because we are not allowing His Spirit to control us. Right? There, is, there is nothing, right? there is nothing in our lives that we cannot get victory over. Nothing. The question is, do you want victory over it? Do you want victory over it? I know a lot of times we say we want victory, but we really don't. You know why? Because we're not willing to fight for it. Victory does not come without a fight. It doesn't come without a fight. It's not just, you just, you're not just going to sit there and say, okay, God, give me victory over this, and then boom, God just gives you victory. Not going to happen. That's what we would like, but that's not going to happen. God says this is something that's going to begin in the Spirit, right? It begins with that personal walk with God. That's why when you go back to Galatians, in Galatians, what does he talk about there in Galatians chapter 2? Galatians chapter number 2. I'm sorry, Galatians chapter 5. You know, a two and a five kind of look the same, right? Backwards, dyslexic maybe. (laughs) Galatians chapter 5. Notice he says in verse number 13, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. So we have liberty in Christ. But what does he say? Only use not your liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Can I ask you a question? Do you believe the Word of God? That was a question. <laughs> All right. Do you believe the Word of God? I hope so. I hope if you're a Christian, you believe the Word of God. Then you can believe that when he says, walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh, means walk in the Spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. When we are walking in the Spirit, when we are allowing the Spirit, God's Spirit, to commune with our spirit and control us and work through us, then we can get victory over the flesh. And let's be honest, there's so many times when we just hate the flesh, don't we? Because we feel like the flesh is always getting victory. We feel like, man, we're trying, we're trying, we're trying, and then we fall. And we're trying, and we're trying, and we're trying, and we fall. It's like the flesh is always getting victory. Maybe it's time we stop trying to do it in our own strength and go back to what God says and walk in the Spirit and will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, how does this affect? Well, let's go to the second part. As we Think about the Spirit, and as the Spirit is the focal point, and that being our relationship with the Lord and our walk with God and making sure that we're spending time with God, then the Spirit begins to affect the second part of us. That is our soul, our mind, right? You you realize there is so much in the Bible that speaks about the mind. There is a battle taking place for your mind. There's a battle taking place for your mind, your will, your emotions, Think about what the Bible says here. Notice in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter number 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Notice in verse number 5. Well, go back up to, to verse number 3. Let's get the context here. For though we walk in the flesh. Well, there we go, right? We're walking in the flesh, but what does he say? We have a fleshly body, but what? The battle's not fleshly. We do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Notice, Paul says the same thing here to the Corinthian church as he said to the church in Thessalonica. He wants God to sanctify you wholly. He wants God to be able to enable you to tear down those strongholds, right? That we're going to see, verse number five. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Where do our thoughts take place? They place in our mind. And he says, as a Christian, God's desire is that we would bring every thought, every imagination, we cast down those things and bring every thought into the captivity of Christ. 
Why is there such a battle for your mind? Think about it. Satan did this. He used it. He, he tried Adam and Eve to reason intellectually to think that they did not need God, that all they needed was their flesh. That they could do it. You want to be like God? Eat this fruit. You want to know good and evil? Here you go. It's right here. And he gets them to reason intellectually. And instead of them listening to the Spirit, where they already knew God said, no, don't do this, they begin to listen to the body. Begin to listen to what Satan had to offer, right? So watch what he says here. Casting down imaginations. By the way, this is why it's so important that you guard what goes into your mind. You have to guard what goes into your mind. You have to guard what goes into your eyes. You have to guard what goes into your ears. Because there is a war taking place and the devil wants full control. How in the world do we think that we are going to get victory over our flesh when we are feeding our mind with everything that the world has to offer? When we spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, whether it's watching uh, TV programs or movies or on the computer and all these different things and, and uh, video games and stuff, what is that doing? That is filling our mind with things that have nothing to do with God. Nothing. And that's exactly what the devil wants. The more things he can put into your mind that have nothing to do with God, the more he's going to get victory in your life. And that's why he says, casting down imaginations. By the way, this is not the only time. If you go back, look, go back with me to Genesis chapter 6. In Genesis chapter 6, why did God destroy the world? In Genesis chapter 6, notice in verse number 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. What happened? Their minds were so corrupted that every thought that they had was evil and wicked. I mean, look, I, I, I think about what is happening in our world today and I think about how the thoughts are, are wicked and evil today. I can't even imagine. Think about this. Their every thought was so wicked, everything was so evil that God says, I'm going to have to destroy them because every imagination and the thought of their heart is evil continually. And God wipes them off the face of the earth. There's only eight people that are saved. You don't think there's a battle for your mind? For your soul, your mind, what are we putting in? Are we putting in everything that the world wants? Feeding our mind, whether it's music or movies or video games or whatever it is, books, whatever. We're just feeding our mind with everything that is of the world. We have to be very, very careful. Look, I'm not saying it's wrong to, to play a video game. I'm not saying it's wrong to watch a movie or a TV show or something like that. But I'm saying you better be careful what you're putting in because your mind is going to start taking hold of those things and you're going to start creating imaginations and strongholds that are going to be very, very hard to break down. I'll be honest with you. There's no doubt in my mind that there are some people already tonight saying, I don't have a problem with that. That's, Pastor, you're crazy. It, it doesn't matter whether we watch these things or play these things or listen to these things. You're crazy. That just tells me how strong of a stronghold Satan has in your mind. When you don't think that he has a stronghold, that's exactly what he has. And we have to be very, very careful about this. Every imagination of the thought of, his heart, of their hearts was only evil. By the way, go back to Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1. 
when God speaks about those that have turned away from him, notice what he says. For the wrath of God, in verse number 18, Romans chapter 1, verse 18, is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness because that which may be known of God is manifest in them for God hath showed it unto them for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse because that when they knew God they glorified him not as God neither were thankful become vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened what happened they had a reprobate mind why did they do all of these things and and i'm not going to take the time to read the rest of the chapter here but you read the rest of the chapter as adults and you can understand the the what is happening here and god said they had a reprobate mind how did that happen because the devil took over Look, we have to understand if we want to get victory over the things that we do, maybe in our body, whether it's our tongue or our actions or whatever, it doesn't begin in the mind, it begins in the spirit. And we have to work to make sure that our relationship and our walk with God is right. And when that is right, then He is able to work through us and that will begin to affect our soul, our mind. Because as we begin to think on things that are true to think on things that are pure to think on things that are love why do you think he says that there in philippians finally brethren think on these things why because look at what else is out there believe me that you're not going to find things that are uh, that are true and pure and clean and holy from hollywood Amen. Why do, we ha- why do we have a hard time agreeing with that? Why do we have a hard time agreeing that you're not going to find things that are pure and true and clean and holy and righteous and virtuous from the world? If we have a hard time agreeing with that, that again just shows the, the, the strongholds that we've already created in our mind. That's why he says casting down those things. Casting down those imaginations. He says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse number 3, fulfilling, they were fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind. In 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 13, he tell, says that we are to gird up the loins of your mind. Why? Because the devil's after it. The devil wants control of your mind. Because if he can control your mind, he has you. He has you. If he can get your mind. If your soul now becomes more important than the spirit. If your body becomes more important than the spirit, he's got you. And we will never get victory until we get back to what he says. That we are to be our whole body. What is the whole body referring to? Spirit, soul, and body. Be sanctified and be found blameless. Why do you think he says in Romans chapter 12, in verse number 2, that we are to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? You see, as we begin to focus on the things of God and we begin to to walk with God, that now begins to change our desires. It begins to change our soul. It begins to change our will. No longer is, uh, is it all about me, but now as I'm focusing on God and the Spirit and making sure that I'm walking with God, now He begins to have control over my desires. He begins to have control over my thoughts. And as soon as there is a thought that comes into my mind that I know I shouldn't be there, I have to cast it down and get it out and I have to put something else in its place this is where I think a lot of times we really fail in this we say yes I know that's wrong and I want to get it cast out and we try to cast it out but the problem is when you cast something out of your mind you leave a hole something's going to fill that hole it may not be that very thing that you cast out but the devil is going to find something else to put in its place It's interesting what David said. 
Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. When we cast down those imaginations and those thoughts, you know what we need to put in its place? The word of God. The word of God, why? Because the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. You want to be able to get victory? We've got to fill our mind with the things of God and his word. That's why he says renewing, that renewing of your mind he says in Ephesians chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, that we are to be renewed in the spirit of your mind and put on the new man, which is the image of Christ Jesus. You see, our spirit is able to affect our soul, our mind, our will, our desires. Look, I'll be honest, when I, before I got saved, I didn't have a desire to serve God. I didn't have a desire to be a missionary. I didn't have a desire to be a preacher. I didn't have those desires. And after I got saved, I fought those, those things in my life. I didn't want to do those things. But as I began to realize this is what God wanted me to do, and I began to walk with the Lord, I began to realize I have to submit to His will. If I'm going to have victory in my life, if I'm going to have God working through me and sanctifying me wholly and, and helping me to be blameless, I have to submit to Him. I have to submit to the Spirit, not to the flesh, not to my soul, not to my will or my thoughts or my intellect. I have to submit to Him. Spirit controls the soul. When we're walking with God, and I tell you, why do you think He says in Ephesians when He talks about being Spirit-filled? What? Well, let's, just, let's just go over there real quick because this is, this is so good. In Ephesians, in chapter 5, what is the of someone who is spirit-filled? It's not speaking in tongues. It's not performing miracles or anything like that. But what is it? It says in verse 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms, and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Why, why, do you think, why do you think he puts that as number one? Did you realize that? The number one thing that he says is the evidence of somebody being spirit-filled is singing and making melody in their heart to the Lord, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Why? Because it helps our mind to focus on him. You notice he doesn't talk about the, the marriage relationship or the child relationship or the job relationship. He doesn't talk about those things at the beginning. The first thing he says when he says that we are to be, we are to be spirit-filled, he says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Making melody in your heart. It's on the inside. It's in the soul, in your mind. Thinking about the things of God, meditating upon the things of God, singing the praises to God. Do we have a hard time singing praises to God? Do we have a hard time meditating on the things of God? When we're outside of the church, outside of our home, wherever it might be, do we have a hard time with those things? Maybe it's because we're not spirit-filled as much as we think we are. We're not allowing the Spirit to control us as he desires and as he needs to so that we can get victory in our mind in our will our thoughts casting down those things we can have victory our spirit is able to affect our soul our mind and our mind then is able to affect our body our body think about what Jesus says. From whenceforth cometh wars, murmurings, and adulteries, and thefts, and all these different things. Where do those things come from? Those are all the outward actions, right? Those are the things that we're doing with the body. Those are the outward actions. But he said, where do those things come from? Where do they, where do they begin? In the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. You see, what is on the outside is simply a reflection 
what's on the inside. Look, the things that you, you see on, on TV and things with all these, these, these riots and things like that, that is nothing but what was already on the inside, rebellion and hatred towards authority. It was already on the inside. Why would we be shocked that we see those things? That's what's being taught in our society. We shouldn't be shocked. I mean, that's, that's what our society teaches. If you feel that it's right, do it. Not what we're teaching? Well, if you feel that it's right for you, then go ahead and do it. So if, if I feel it's right to burn your house down, that must be okay. If I feel it's right to, uh, to, to harm your family, that must be... No, we know that's not right. But where do those things come from? Those outward actions are simply a result of what has been inside. It's what's happening in the soul, in our mind. We're, our minds are being filled with those things. Because we're not walking with the things of God. We're not walking in the way that God wants us to be. Our body, our words, our actions, our deeds. You see, what we do with our body is not, it's not the most important thing. Yes, it is important. But so many times we just try to clean up the outside. And that's not what's going to work. Well, if I can just change my speech, if I can just, you know, take some uh, anger management classes and learn how to control my anger, if I can, you know, do this or that, or if I can, I can take some classes here and learn these different things. The problem is that doesn't affect the inside. All that does is try to change the outside. For a Christian, it doesn't begin with the outside. It begins on the inside. Why don't we have... Why don't we have more young people surrendering to the Lord and being used of God? Why don't we? I mean, we have. You go across the United States and churches, and we have plenty of young people in our churches that could be used of God. So why, why aren't they being used of God? Is it because we're not really teaching them that the things of God are important? What are we doing? We're instilling in their mind... That serving God is not important. And therefore, what do we see? We see a lack of young men and young ladies serving God. By the way, you know where that starts? It starts with the adults. Why do we see a lack of adults across our country serving God? Because we have allowed the world to fill our mind with what the world thinks is right. This is what the world determines is success. And we have followed hook, line, and sinker the thoughts of the world. And therefore, it affects the body. And we're having fewer and fewer men and women and young people having a desire to serve God. It's not because they weren't brought to church. Oh, they were here. Their bodies were here. The problem was the Spirit didn't get right. The Spirit was never taught that you have to have a walk with God, that you have to have that personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, and, and you have to yield to His Spirit and allow Him to work through you and control you. Think about what Paul says, I am crucified with Christ. That's where we all have a problem. We don't want to be crucified with Christ. Because to be crucified with Christ means he is in control and I am dead. And we don't want to be dead. Our flesh wants to be alive. But Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. We, we look at Paul and we think, man, he was just such supernatural, uh, amazing Christian. Why? It wasn't because he was any different than anybody else. It was because he walked in the Spirit. He wasn't perfect, but he accomplished great things for God because he would not allow his flesh to control him. He allowed the Spirit. He walked in the Spirit. And that affected his soul. It affected his mind and his will. It affected what he did for God. Think about what he says here. Go back with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. It 
Is living ready really possible? Is it really possible to live spirit, soul, and body? Are those things really possible? It says in verse 24, Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. You see, it's not pastor that's calling you to do this. It's not First Baptist Church that's calling you to live ready. It's Him. And He says, He is faithful. Who called you. He came looking for us. He found us. He was willing to save us. He called us for His purpose. But notice what also He says, who also will do it. He says, if we will surrender to Him and we will live spirit, soul, and body, we will allow His Spirit to control us and we will yield to Him and allow Him to work in our life and affect our soul and affect our body, He says, He will do it. Why? Because He's faithful. He says, I'm not going to tell you to do something that I'm not going to give you the ability to do it. In and of ourselves, it is impossible to do. That's why we always fall. Because we live in the flesh. But he says, if you will live ready, if you will live through prayer and through sanctification, through being blameless, spirit, soul, and body, he says, faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. And I tell you, I'm thankful for God's promises. He said, this is what I'm calling you to do. And if you'll do it, I will give you the ability to do it. I will give you the strength that you need to do it. I'm going to work with you. I'm going to be right there with you. He said, I will take every step with you and help you as you yield to me. I'll be there to help you and work, you, work through the problems with you. And I'll be there to help bring down those strongholds of your mind and help bring every thought into the captivity of Christ. And, and as you yield to me, he says, I'll be there to help you to do these things. But it's our choice. Whether we want to live a victorious life or not. Whether we want to live in that hope that Jesus Christ had come back at any moment and I want to be found blameless. I want to be found waiting for the coming of Jesus Christ. Spirit, blameless. Soul, blameless. Body, blameless. Are we living ready? With the heads bowed and our eyes closed. Every head bowed, every eye closed. No one looking about tonight. I just have one question for you. Are you living spirit, soul, body? Or are you living body, soul, and spirit? If your focus is your body and your soul, it's going to be very hard for you to live ready for the return of Jesus Christ. And when He returns, we will not be blameless. But Christian, I can tell you, based upon the Word of God, that if we will determine to live spirit, soul, and body, and allow Him to sanctify us completely, faithful is He who calleth you, who also will do it. If we're willing to live spirit, soul, and body, God says, I will help you to do it. And you can have victory. Father, I pray 
Lord, that each of us tonight would examine our hearts and that we would have that determination that we would live spirit, soul, and body. Lord, may we not walk in the flesh. May we not live body, soul, and spirit because, Lord, you're last. We'll never get victory as a Christian. We'll never be ready for your coming. We'll never be found blameless. Father, I pray you'd help us. I pray for Christian men tonight. Lord, that they would realize how important this is. Lord, that we can have victory over our mind, our thoughts, our imaginations, our, our will, our desires. Lord, if we live spirit, soul, and body. Lord, I pray for Christian ladies tonight. Lord, we can have victory over our will and our emotions and, and the things that go on in, inside, Lord, if we would live spirit, soul, and body. Father, I pray for young people. Lord, that they would surrender and live spirit, soul, and body. Lord, that they would learn at a young age to yield to your spirit, to walk with you. Lord, to learn early to guard what they put into their mind. To bring every thought to the captivity of Christ. Lord, when there are thoughts that come into their mind that shouldn't be there, that they would remove those thoughts and replace them with your word, with singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Lord, that how we live our life would be wholly sanctified to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With the heads bowed and eyes closed, we'll just stand to our feet quietly. The piano's just going to play softly. Christian, are you living spirit, soul, and body? Or are you living body, soul, and spirit? Maybe God has spoken to your heart tonight and you know there's something that's not right. You're not getting victory in your life the way you know God wants you to, the way you want to have victory. Maybe it's time just to say, Lord, I need to, I need to start living right. I need to start living spirit, soul, and body. Walking with you. Having that relationship with you. Allowing you to control my thoughts, my mind, my will. my spirit is right and when my soul is right I can walk in the spirit and not walk in the flesh I can give victory
Amen. God bless you for being here this evening. Again, don't forget, be back uh, Sunday morning, uh, 10 o'clock for Sunday school, right? And we've started the Sunday school back up, and so be back here 10 o'clock for Sunday. Well, be here a little bit earlier, fellowship a little bit, right? And, uh, but we'll have Sunday school starting at 10 o'clock, and uh, then, of course, our normal service at 11 and then Sunday night as well, all right? Uh, be in prayer for, again, be in prayer for those teens uh, at camp. And, of course, uh, Brother Jake and Miss Leanne are there with them as well, and they'll be traveling back on Friday. And uh, so be in prayer for them this week as well, all right? Let's go ahead and be dismissed in a word of prayer. Brother Jay, would you dismiss in prayer?